The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 18th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to have an extraordinary day is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. That's right. You can dial on in, 877-927-6648. would love to talk to you. But if you can't get to the phone, if you can't dial in, let those fingers do the walking. You've got to have a question or so. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Do it early, you know, so that the Internet service providers can get that email to me. In the subject heading, if you put radio show question, that would be great. Of course, in the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, it's mean and green across the board. All indices up about a percent or more. In fact, uh, about 4% when you take a look at the semiconductor index. But the spot volatility is up 17 pennies. Train out at 15.51. Always unusual with the S&P up 27 points to see that combination. We'll try to go investigate that. Gold's up 8 bucks. Silver, 17 pennies. Light sweet crude, bucks 74. Lead the charge dollar-wise to the upside. It is lending tree up nearly 22 bucks, 5.5%. Amazon up uh, 20 bucks. Google's up 15 and change. Boeing, 15 buckaroonies. To the downside, Biohaven. Doesn't sound like a haven to me. Pharmaceuticals out 13 bucks or 23%. Chipotle down nearly 7 bucks, about 1%. Constellation Brands down uh, about 5 bucks, 2.5%. So certainly things to look at. But I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's start off by looking at the markets. Today is a beautiful day to be able to do that. And, and so we always have to keep perspective. Perspective is everything. Here's Stevie's perspective on what the markets are doing. If we begin by taking a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, what we're going to see is that the Dow is trading in a consolidation, oftentimes tricky markets. Do you want to jump on board and, be, and go along right now? The answer to that question is absolutely not. Consolidations can last for a long period of time. You've got two of them here that we're taking a look at. When we look at the Dow Equity Futures contract. We've got a monthly chart. You can see the 2015, uh, well, it really began, the reality is, began back in 2014. Uh, didn't confirm the actual breakout. It really did it twice. You could say the real breakout took place in July of 2016. There was a final test and rejection. That makes a lot of sense in November of 2016 because the market typically makes uh, some type of low in the middle of October, this one here right around the 1st of November. And, and when we take a look at these consolidations, these little rectangles, it's really ideal when you break above a level of resistance, come back, test it, and then reject it, and then move forward. That's exactly what took place back in the 2014, 15, 16 time frame out here. And uh, we don't have any such pattern in play right now. The pattern we have in play right now is the consolidation pattern. Now, price can even get above 26,803. That's the actual high uh, going back into January of 2018. But that's not the high that the Dow Equity Futures contract made. It's high was 26. 
27019. So there may be further room to the upside, but if you're asking me the question, uh, and you see the market up 320 points, is now the time to take a new long position in the Dow? The answer to that question is going to be, well, you answer the question yourself. My answer is absolutely, positively not. In fact, if anything, we should be looking for topping signals as we approach the top of the consolidation out there. Now, if we take a look at the Dow equity futures contract and take a look at its horizontal trading ranges, well, one of those levels, in essence, was hit earlier. You see the red horizontal line out here at 26,558, which is approximately the high of today. We're not, we use these as guidelines, not exact numbers out there. That is its monthly horizontal horizontal trading range level. So price has gotten up to a resistance area. That doesn't mean it won't go tag the highs out here, but it has hit a level of resistance. If we go take a look at the uh, uh, TAS market profiles, look at the daily and the weekly, look, what this tells us, if you look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, let me just simply expand that chart. What this is going to show us is that the top of its weekly profile is 26,699. We're trading at 26,472. So likely price is targeting that area. That may, in fact, be the cap on the consolidation. We'll just have to take things one day at a time, one step at a time. If you take a look at the ES Mini, that's your left hand panel, 2948 could be the max move out there inside the NQ it's got quite a ways to go 7906 we're at 7673 and the Russell 2000's got a mind of its own there's no weekly profile that makes sense for me to go ahead and put that uh, up on the uh, screen for you so where does that leave us? Well, we have to continue to investigate this market looking for other signals let's assume that Stevie's right that we are closer to a top than a bottom out here, and I'm not saying it is today on June the 18th out here, although it could be. Let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. What do we know? Well, it actually looks pretty decent out here right now, but what we know is that the advanced decline oscillator line currently trading at 108.80, maybe on its way up to the 150 level. We're not seeing any divergence here that makes us concerned with regard to the advanced decline oscillator, not as of 1.13 in the afternoon. And the spot volatility index, I did mention, was trading slightly higher. Right now, trading out at 15.42, but the 50-day exponential moving average is 15.85 out here. So this suggests to me the following. As long as spot volatility index is trading below its 50-day exponential, closes below closes below 1585 today well then the rally should continue the markets the equity futures contracts ought to hit those other resistance levels that we took a look at when we looked at the uh, TAS market profiles out there um and as long as the spot volatility index so the top may be a little further away may be a little further away than we think and that's based upon the behavior of the spot volatility index. That is another key metric that you and I are going to watch. If you take a look at this chart right here, what you're going to notice is the blue line is the 50-day exponential moving average. When price closes below the 50-day, the majority of the time, and when I say majority, we're talking the majority of the time, price will go down and test its lower Bollinger Band at about 1312. If that's the case, there's a lot of rally left in this market. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications 
automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our first question out here. This is from Mike in Sarasota. Mike's got a couple of uh, equity positions he wants to take a look at. The first is LAM Research out here. LRCX is the uh, ticker symbol. And the question is uh, basically, uh, let's see. Can you give me your take on the semis, SMH, or the SOX as a backdrop for LRCX? Um, looking to, looks like you're long some calls from 165. Okay, 165, 166. So when I take a look at LAM research, Mike, I'm going to first start. So we're looking for bottoming patterns and signals out here. So the ideal one took place, uh, let me get my crosshair out here, took place on the trading session of June the 3rd. On June the 3rd, we had that uh, TD setup nine count. The actual nine count took place on May 31st. Remember, in this case here with the market moving lower, that bottom signal could be generated in bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. This was the bar following nine, and it was trading right into a support level. And that was this red horizontal line. That's also set up by a previous nine count out there. And in fact, we saw a nice little rally. If we take a look at the current pattern out here, we don't have a current bottoming pattern. What we have is a prior test of the swing point from back in June. So let's switch over to another set of charts. This is our TAS market profile charts. I believe there's a workshop tomorrow night which I would recommend that everyone attend out here. Uh, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, Mike, here's what we know. You've probably spotted this. The swing point that has been tested uh, is the June 3rd swing point at 2.4 million shares. When it was first tested, it was with 2.1 on June 14th, then uh, 1.9 on June 17th, and then finally today, we've got about 1.4 million shares uh, test, and in this case here, a rejection of that level. And if price can close above 180.68, 
uh, maybe you get that bounce to 189.65. You did get a uh, a downdraft move, a gap to the downside on June 12th with about 2.7 million shares. Um, you know, in an essence, it looks like we're going to be light on volume compared to that downdraft. So, Lamb Research, hey, look, it bottomed back here in June, June 3rd. Maybe this has been nothing more than a light volume test that swing point. And it would, so, in, so I can understand the trade out there, uh, but it wasn't as if the bottom formed here yesterday. And yesterday was a close inside that swing point that never tested the low of 171.04. So, look, uh, stay with the trade. The semis are, uh, at this stage here, the stronger of the indices. However, let's put that in perspective. Uh, before I just make that statement, let me make sure I give you the proper perspective out here for the semis. Here is the semis coming off of the high from April 24th down to the low on May 29th. And what you can see, it's just trading right around the 0.382 retracement level, 1408. I would we know that the S&P, the Dow are trading into their all time swing point high. So we do have a weaker indice that is out here. That doesn't mean that it's not going to move higher and it's not going to move up to the 1483 level out there. But specifically with regard to LAM research, I'd say stay with the trade. Don't let it close below the uh, low from June the 3rd. That level is 171.04. The second um, the second actual uh, equity, PANW, uh, that's a PAN, Palo L Networks. And I believe Mike is either in or looking for a long position there. So when we take a look at Stevie's bottoming tool, topping tool out here, uh, what we can see is that this also formed a bottom back on June 6th. That was your TD setup nine count out there. That really held. And at this stage, uh, this looks like uh, Palo Allo Networks may be targeting its uh, Tommy DeMarc setup a uh, trend line, its resistance, its breakdown line, that was from May 24th. That level is 223.46 out there, 223.46. When we take a look at its profiles, Mike, what you'd ideally like to see today is a close above 206.56. That's the top of the daily profile here at 206.32 as we speak. If we get that, then you already have the uh, price target for Palo Allo networks out there. Just try saying that fast three times. I can't because I'll screw it up. So um, looks pretty good. Looks like a bottom. Here's the here's the other issue you're dealing with regard to Palo Allo networks. You're going to get perhaps two confusing, uh, two divergent messages today, and that is that Palo Allo networks on the trading session of May the 30th, a gap to the downside. Remember, gaps are our friends out there. They help to set up support and resistance. As we take a look at Palo Alto Networks out here, uh, the gap to the downside was with 5.1 million shares. Mike, I want you to make sure you're sitting down. You're trading higher today on 590,000 shares. Yeah, yeah, like 10% or 90% less. Now the day's not over, but we're not gonna get anywhere near that. now. 21035 is the nut out here. The actual high today, 21039. So prices tested that resistance level. And so, yeah, look, ideally, I said you'd like to get a close above 206.56. Um, you know, the real ideal trade setup is to get a close above 210.35. So you've just got to be careful here. Continue to watch. So far, you've got a rejection of where price had a, a downdraft. That was on Palo Allo. Networks. Hope that helps you out. Alex wrote in as well. Let's go see what Alex's question is. Uh, Alex writes in and he says, hey, Steve, hey, Alex, does the IBB look like it can keep going up and up and up? I don't know. Let's go take a look at the IBB, see what it's trading into, where its resistance levels are. Let's begin that resistance uh, search by taking a look at its daily, weekly, monthly, and its uh, quarterly uh, TAS market profile. So you're above the daily. That's a positive. You are above the weekly, which is at 106.29. 104.64 was the daily. So that looks good. Looks like this is headed to 109.32. That's the center of the monthly profile. And above that, 120.70. Let's go check it out uh, on the daily time frame chart see if we see any signals out here let's do a little bit of a wave count see where we're at uh, in that wave count to the upside uh, you're only in wave number two a swing point was taken out let's go see if that swing point was taken out with volume that was a few days ago out here mike's and that was a swing point from the trading session 
of June 10th, that was 1.2 million shares taken on with 2 million. So that's a nice little positive. This could, in fact, I be, and I'm sorry, not Mike, that was Alex that was asking the question. So Alex, looks to me like there may be a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. The A to, the one to one price projection was your 10703, well, we're 10782, 1 to 1.272, 10833. Uh, no reason this can't go to the next level. That would be 10997. So we have these different expansion levels. Uh, the expansion levels are referring to the length of the A to B. That's defined. And then what we do is we just simply multiply that length times 1.272, 1.618, 2, 2.618. We use our Fibonacci summation sequence ratios out there. And uh, what I would suggest, Alex, is it looks like this is going to, there's nothing to suggest to me that this will not continue to move higher, uh, but you've got to stay on your toes. Where did I put that other chart? Did I actually do that and delete it? I'll go put my screen back up here for you, but I think I may have in haste uh, done the unthinkable. That's okay. I always have a backup plan. So Alex, looks to me like the IBB wants to continue to head higher, but watch out. If there's any kind of bearish reversal signal that forms or candle, you'll have a sell the D point and a Gartley sell pattern. We just don't have it at 126 in the afternoon. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, Alex, I want you to stay with that trade. Again, I want you to watch for some type of bearish reversal signal. But as I look at the weekly time frame chart out here for you, we can see that the uh, bottom was formed where that TD set up nine count. Remember, in this case here, that low can occur on bars eight, nine, or ten. In this case, it was bar number eight. Now, what you like to see this week, it's only Tuesday, but assuming that the IBB closes over 105.35, that's Stevie's red line number as we speak at 1.30 in the afternoon on, Jan on uh, June the uh, 18th out there. Then this says that uh, intermediate term, price may just simply run up to where price broke down. That was the trading week of April 12th, and that high is 114.88. So you watch the, you got the A to B equals CD pattern on the daily chart that's underway. Watch for any kind of bearish candle. Assuming one doesn't show up, now you've got your price target for the IBB. That's on the weekly time frame out there. Thanks for writing in. Next question here coming in from, and I would love the question, so please keep sending those cards and letters. Uh, this next one coming from HD, and HD says, hey, Steve, would you please take a look at Ring, please, looking for an exit. That would be one ringy dingy, two ringy dingies. Let's go take a look at Ring out here, trading at 1870. It's trading above the top of its daily profile, above the top of the weekly profile. Those were 1811 and 1804, respectively, above the top of the monthly profile. That's sitting at 1653. And suggest to you and I, maybe headed to 2006. That's the center of its quarterly. But we won't stop there. We're going to go ahead and put that ticker symbol R-I-N-G in the Stevie's other system and see if we can figure out any other patterns that HD needs to be concerned with. So as we take a look at the daily time frame, we can see the stretch that's underway. That's price moving higher, doing less relative energy, but no bearish reversal signal that has formed just yet. By the way, when this thing did form a bottom back on a May the 11th, and I don't know how this works. I just know that it does work. And thank you, Saratoga Bob and John inside the Tiger's Den for just simply pointing this out to me. But it was uh, singing. That's ring. You, th you think of one ring-a-dingy, two ring a ding Is that what Steve-O or Stevie Wonder singing in the key of G? Because that's the wave count that formed the bottom back on May 11th. Now, let's just start doing the count up from there, see where we're at. Oh, we are in wave number six, letter F. So you're looking for an exit. I don't see the exit gate just yet. But watch, because today's Tuesday. If you don't make a higher high tomorrow, but you do on uh, Thursday, that could get you to wave number seven, letter G out there. And now, I don't want to know if you believe in coincidences, uh, but maybe this is going to be one of those. So I would stay on the lookout inside of ring. Now, just because it gives you that top would also mean, HD, that price just may pull back to test Stevie's green line. That's a level of support at 1817 out there. But as we speak right now today, I only see a potential pattern that you should be aware of, but not anything to be taking action on. Action Jackson. If we take a look at the, uh, here's the, uh, here's the uh, weekly time frame chart for Ring. I don't want to say that it made a bottom with the TD setup nine count, but guess what? It made a bottom back in September of 2018 with that exact count. Do you think maybe, just maybe, you might want to take a look at that tool out there? Of course, subscribers to Mastering Probability get a one-hour workshop that teaches you exactly what to do. And so for your instruments, you want to know. Now, in this case here, there may be a weekly A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, so that's why you've got to make that choice uh, investment, uh, just a trade that could eventually take you up into the 2170 level, 2117. That's your one to one A to B equals CD for a ring. I don't have anything on the monthly time frame, so no reason for me to go, excuse me, to go ahead and bring that over. So HD, there's the chart patterns for one ringy dingy, two ringy dingies. You say you think it trades like the GDX. Uh, I don't know if it does, but I'll just pass that along to our listeners out there. Okay, that takes care of uh, all of the requests that are in at this moment. So what do we do next, Denners? What do we do next? What should we go take a look at? I know so somebody out there is going to say, you got to take a look at Goldilocks out here. You know, here's an interesting chart that I will that I will put forth to you. And hopefully you're watching this on Tiger TV. If not, you just go into YouTube, just type in today's date or any date that you want. Put in uh, the Trader's Edge by Steve Rhodes. 
and you'll get thousands of videos out there. And, and here's the question. As you look at this chart, everybody inside the den right now, as you take a look at this chart, again, we're back to the Dow Equity Futures contract, which so easily shows us this consolidation pattern that we're in between 23.207 and 26.803 out there. As prices moving towards this 26.803, what is it we should be looking for? Do you think there's going to be a breakout? Or is this likely we're nearing a topping time frame out here so when you look at this chart many of you may have said hey look you're you're nearing the top of the consolidation uh, there's no way i'm entering a new position now okay so if that's the case then i want to show you this chart this chart looks like this i want you to look at the top portion of this chart and yes the top portion of this chart is gold and this is a monthly time frame chart. We were looking at a monthly time frame chart for the Dow Equity Futures contract, too. And I want you to notice the price area, 136180 to 1392. Don't worry about the pennies, so to speak. But you tell me where gold is at as we speak right now, trading right up into that resistance zone. Now, we share this chart with you for one primary purpose. What I don't want you to do is begin a new gold position, a long position now, uh, and certainly in front of the uh, Fed. This is resistance, significant resistance. Remember, we took a look at the Dow's consolidation. We said, look, more times than not, even if you do break above the consolidation, such as the occurrence back in July of 2016, price still came back a few months later and tested that breakout level out there. That's the normal pattern that takes place when you break through resistance out there so don't get ahead of yourself and if you are in gold positions as we speak right now make sure you are taking active measures i feel like we're doing the uh hunt for red october out there where you've got to take active measures what's that mean jelly bean it means tighten up those stops now maybe it is that gold is going to go ahead and take out this 1392 level 1361 i don't know but i do know is guess what? Gold hasn't been able to take that level out since October of 2013. October of 2013. Mathematically speaking, that's nearly six years out here. So that's a pretty stiff resistance area. It was tested back in 2016 several times and failed to get above it. It was If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Sorry about that sound problem that we were having, but let me just make sure that I make the uh, last point out here with regard to Goldilocks, and just simply be careful. Just simply recognize, don't get caught up into, you know, today's price movement or anything. Recognize that price is running up into a significant level of resistance out here. That's not the case when we take a look at the GDX, by the way. That's at the bottom panel of the screen out there. That wouldn't take place till you get to about 3135, but uh, don't be paying attention to that. Gold and the GDX are going to trade directionally speaking in the same direction the majority of the time out here just recognize that uh, the gold is likely closer to a top than it is to being able to break out above the significant resistance level let's go to our next question this one coming in from uh, brent in martinez california brent writes in and says uh, there's a number of stocks in the energy sector that i follow which are getting down to levels worthy of a look took a long position uh, longer term uh, in the money calls uh, for SLCA yesterday uh, would like some analysis there. So let's go take a look at uh, U.S. Silica um, holdings out here. And what we can take a look at, let's just begin uh, by taking a look at the TAS market profiles. Now, remember, these market profiles are not going to necessarily identify a bottom. What they are is they help us identify support and resistance out here. Uh, they, are the, they are the referees, so to speak, on the football field because the palette that you and I look at is nothing more than a football field. When you take a look at these TAS market profiles, you see them forming all over the place. What does that mean? Those are basically, think of it as the uh, first down yardage markers you know the two yardage markers that the uh, two referees stretch to figure out here's where the line of scrimmage is and here's where your first down is well that's really what these that's my best metaphor at this stage of the game uh, for the uh, for the uh, TAS market profiles out there. But here's what we do know, that on a daily basis, uh, SLCA, U.S. Silica Holdings, is back in the game. It's trying to make a first down, so to speak. It's back in the range. That's above 1047, Brent, so that's a beautiful thing. This would suggest to move up to 1144, and that is the top of its box. You want to be able to see price take that out and continue to move those chains forward. You're below the weekly uh, profiles out there, so that's not a help, and you are below 
the monthly. So what you're trying to do is identify a bottom versus buy low. And that's a strategy that I subscribe to as well. You'd never want to buy low. You want to buy bottoms. What Brent is looking for is a bottom. And what do we have out here? We've got the Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal. That's a bottoming pattern. That occurred out here on June. Well, it actually began on June 13th. It continued June 14th, meaning price made a lower low, did it with less relative energy. And voila, Brent, on June 15th, you got the bullish hammer candle. That's what that pattern needs. And then you just need to see a price close above Stevie's red line. You got all that in one shot on the 15th. So this looks like where price could head to. This is non-market profile, but where U.S. Silica Holdings broke down was on the trading session of May 21st. Or I believe it's May 21st. It's right around there. I'll give you the price point. Uh, I'll try to give you the price point out here. So the first target, there we go. The third time was the charm. It's 1309. You're at 1080. So 1309 appears to be the target. That's the resistance line. That is using that TD setup nine count and where price broke down. So that's the daily time frame chart out there. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, what do we see out here? Well, what we see in the weekly chart is that this too was also pushing lower, less relative energy. And it's only Tuesday. We may have a bullish engulfing candle. Now, its red line is priced uh, slightly higher whoops than where we're at right now looks like about 1103 is the number as we speak so you'd love to see a move a close above 1103 what you'll also notice this is going to get tricky it's going to get really tricky um is that um you know you had an eight count you really have two patterns here so the td set up nine count this week the only way that it qualifies as a nine count, nine count is a close below 1095 you're at 1080 right now. But even if that count vanishes and you close above that, uh, what did I say that was 1095? No, 10, uh, 1090, no, 1095, that's what I said. If you close above that, well, you still have the Rose Momentum Indicator bottom pattern out there. So you have two bottoming patterns in U.S. Silica Holdings, one on the weekly, one on the uh, daily time frame out there. So uh, nice work as always. That is Brent in Martinez, California. He is the big game hunter. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, we got it. That was everything that you were looking for. And there's a big game fish. That was courtesy of uh, Brent. Okay, so that's all the questions that we've got so far. But let's uh, continue. But, but, but if you've got a question out there, I would love to be able to uh, assist you in some way, shape, or form. So let's continue with the uh, form out here. That form was we started looking at the Dow Equity Futures contract, the New York Stock Exchange, the spot volatility next. Let's take a look at the ES Mini, see where we're trading. In relationship to its horizontal trading ranges, uh, price is uh, broken above resistance. That was its daily horizontal trading range at 29.10, and there was also a monthly buried right behind it. That says that the ES Mini should make its way to 29.62, 29.61. That's its weekly horizontal trading range. That'll take it right into that May 1st high out there. Uh, so that's what the ES Mini is telling us. If we take a look at the ES Mini and look at its uh, four TAS market profiles. These are longer term, so to speak, daily, weekly, monthly, and then quarterly in the lower right. We're going to see that prices above three of the four profiles. Take that back. Two of the four profiles. So what that says to uh, two of the, it's, it's, yeah, and, and the other two are trading with inside the box. Don't worry, I'll spit it out without spitting. That's a beautiful thing. The top of the uh, monthly profile is 29.65. That's the ES Mini. And 29.48 when we take a look at the weekly time frame. So where is it that price is likely headed to? 29.48, first stop. Above that, you're looking at 29.65. That's just simply using profiles. And again, back to the horizontal trading range is 29.61. There's your range as to where price is likely headed to. Now, the only thing that could get in the way out here, this is something to be paying attention to, I will say, I will share with you. Subscribers and I, we got long all the way back here down at the most recent bottom. That was on June the 3rd and uh, the morning of June the 4th. And uh, we just simply continue to adjust our stops sometimes a couple times a day, like today as an example. Why would we do that? 
Look, folks, you and I, we take a look at these patterns. We watch them over and over and over again. And where did the ES Mini break down? Well, it's very clear where it broke down was 29.38. It wasn't up at the swing point. That was simply a topping signal. That was Rose Momentum Indicator topping signal, where price really began to break down. Believe it or not, it was at that 29.38.25 level out there. We haven't hit that, but we were just below that area. I don't know if price is just kind of hanging out there and ready to try to launch that level. But we are up to an area where it would not surprise me and therefore it should not surprise you if price didn't begin turning down from here inside the ES mini. So we've got to put all these tools together out here. And uh, if we're going to see some type of top, well then Stevie knows the following. I know that we'll see some type of topping pattern in a short-term time frame. So when we take a look at the ES mini, that short-term time frame, or the first one that I would look at, that would be the 30-minute time frame. Well, holy shnikes here. In order for the ES Mini to give you that topping signal, my goodness, just pulling back to its breakout level, and the breakout level is right here. You can see that little red dash line. That took place at 4.30 this morning. That's where price broke out. There would be nothing wrong if the ES Mini pulled back to 29, 28.90.75. Whew. But who wants to ride that one out? But you'd need to close below that in order to get a topping confirmation. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 343, S&P 29, NASDAQ 100 up 118. So continuing to be mean and green across the board. Let's try to really wrap this up here, um, the market. So I, so how do I summarize it? Uh, because we are close to the top of the consolidation in the Dow, both you and I should be on the lookout for some type of topping pattern or signal. I don't see those just yet. We took a look at the ES Mini as an example. It's 30-minute time frame signal. And uh, here, if we take a look at the NQ, its breakout level actually also took place this morning at about 4.30. It's way down from where we're trading right now. The actual level out here, the first place where there could be a crack in the armor, you'd need to see a close above, uh, below 75, 45, 75 out there. I am not saying we're going to see that. I'm saying if we did see that, then we would say... Uh, Aha, uh -huh. that's very interesting. We'd look at some of the other chart patterns that are out there. Um, if I go to even longer term time frames, those signals could also come from the five hour time frame chart because price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. That's the only pattern. But a five hour time frame, this is a candle closes at two o'clock. The next one, at the end of uh, the afternoon uh, session out there, we need to see a bearish reversal signal. If we did, uh, it would make us be very cautious out here. Um, but without the actual confirmation, then these markets want to continue to move higher. And so what you and I want to make sure we're also paying attention to is that spot volatility index. If things are going to get rocking and rolling to the downside, there's one thing that is certain. You'll see that spot volatility index close above, trade above its 50-day exponential moving average. That's priced at 1580. 84, you're at 15.15 right now. Remember, you don't have to catch the exact top to sell the market, nor do you have to catch the exact bottom. You're not trying to sell the top tick and buy the bottom tick, uh, although when you do that, it's just a nice coincidence out there. So we just simply want to be on guard. But everything looks like it still wants to continue to move higher. The market provides us with new information. Well, you and I will take a look at that tomorrow. But in the meantime, stay tuned for another great show by your favorite polar bear, the best polar bear in the entire world. That's David White. Tom O'Brien after that. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Wonderful Wednesday. Have a great Tuesday, folks.